In this video, I'm going to talk about fission reactors. A fission reactor is a type of nuclear reactor that's commonly used to generate electric power. So this is a nuclear power plant, basically. And I'll describe how it works. I'll describe what's going on with the radioactive material, and then also how that fits in with the design of the plant to produce electric power. So first, we'll talk about the radioactive part. And this is what we usually call the reactor core. And the core is where the uranium is. And this is what's, what's going on inside the core. There are these pieces of uranium, and they're usually uh, long sticks of uranium like this. And it's not a whole lot of material. Just the amount of uranium that you can hold in your hand is sufficient to power a reactor for years and years. But uranium, remember, is radioactive. Uranium will decay and emit radiation and some of that radiation or part of it is in the form of neutrons and if those neutrons hit other uranium atoms they will cause those to decay more quickly than they otherwise would have so let's imagine that process let's imagine a uranium atom right here decaying and it emits some radiation well that that radiation when it hits other pieces of uranium it excites that uranium or stimulates that uranium to decay so those atoms start decaying and emitting radiation and that radiation can hit other pieces of the uranium and cause it to decay and you can see that we would get this chain reaction that could rapidly get out of control so they need a means to control the reaction if they don't, if it just gets out of control, the reactor core will get hot enough to melt, and that's what a nuclear meltdown is. It's when the core melts, and it usually has devastating results. It hasn't happened very often. Uh, Chernobyl in the Soviet Union, a reactor, had a complete meltdown there, and lots of radioactive material escaped into the environment. A lot of people were harmed as a result of that. It's dangerous stuff. So they need a way to control the reaction. And here's how they do it. They use these uh, rods called control rods, and the control rods are lowered down here in between the pieces of uranium, and the control rods will absorb the neutrons. So they will prevent the decay of one piece of uranium from stimulating the other pieces to decay. So as I've drawn them here, they're lowered around most of the uranium, so only the bottom ends of the sticks of uranium are now exposed to each other. So in this configuration, the, re the reaction would proceed pretty slowly. And then as they raise the control rods, more and more of the uranium is exposed to other pieces of uranium, and that causes the reaction to proceed a lot faster. And they can control the, re the rate of reaction by raising and lowering the control rods. Now the point of doing this is to make heat. That's the whole point of the, the, the reactor core is to get hot. When the uranium decays it releases tremendous amounts of energy and a lot of that is in the form of heat. And it gets very very hot. And they have to cool the reactor core. So here's what the rest of the reactor looks like. At least a simplified diagram. There's a building and the core is inside this building. It usually has a dome-shaped roof. And thick walls to keep the radiation inside the building. And then down in here is the reactor core. And this is filled with water, basically. And that's what we call the primary coolant. and that keeps the core from melting. So the primary coolant is necessary to keep everything from melting, to keep it from melting down. But the primary coolant itself gets very, very hot because it is heated by the reactor core. And so the coolant itself, it becomes less effective as a coolant as it gets hot. So the primary coolant needs to be cooled and they use the secondary coolant to do that. And I'll draw this in a different color. Imagine these pipes coming in here. And they circle around here just to provide a lot of contact area for heat exchange. And then they come back out. And what's going in here 
is the secondary coolant. And the secondary coolant cools the primary coolant and allows it to be cool enough to do its job of cooling the core. But the secondary coolant also gets really hot and when it comes blasting out, it comes out here in the form of steam. Steam takes up a lot more space than water and so it comes out at very high speed. It goes in as cool water and comes out here at very high speed and they run it into a turbine or a turbine. And a turbine is basically a fan in reverse. A fan, as you know, something the, the fan spins and blows the air. Well, a turbine is the reverse of that. It's like a windmill. The air blows on it and it turns it. But this is a steam turbine. The steam coming out blows on the turbine blades and makes them spin. And so this that I'm drawing right here is not a pipe for the steam. This is a drive shaft. The, the blades the turbine blades spin and turn this device which is a generator and that makes the electricity and the electricity is sent out to the power grid and then the steam comes out of the turbine and they need to cool that down so they run the steam into these cooling towers and the cooling towers are what you typically picture in your mind when you think of a, re uh, a reactor because these are the largest and most visible part of the reactor. And in reality, these cooling towers are huge compared to this building. This is not drawn to scale. But these are the cooling towers over here. And they basically just take the steam from the turbine and spray it into the top of the cooling tower and let it drift down. It floats down in this mist and cools off as it floats down and then they can put it back in as the secondary coolant to cool the, the primary coolant to cool the core. And then the whole, the whole thing simply exists to make that heat, to, to heat water and make it into steam to turn the turbine. This is um, very similar to other types of power plants in that other power plants are also heating water to make steam to turn a turbine. In what they call a fossil fueled power plant they would be burning coal or perhaps oil or natural gas some kind of fossil fuel to heat the water to make the steam. In this case they're burning the nuclear fuel. A nuclear reaction is generating the heat to make the steam. But that's basically how a fission reactor works. A very simplified overview, those are the main parts. In reality, there's all kinds of complicated valves and control systems and pressure monitoring systems and radiation monitoring and control systems. It's very complicated, very, uh, highly regulated, and, um, and, and, and dangerous at times if anything goes wrong. But that's the basic idea of how a fission reactor works.